Friday, September 20th. Now, one thing I enjoy about this time of year is that when it comes to harvesting, you harvest so many different things. Look, tomatoes on the tree still, nice and ripe and ready. As much as I'm ready for fall and my fall cleanup and getting my fall starts here ready because I started them in these here and I'm going to transplant them into raised beds. Even this one here is filled with brassicas, that one in the back. I have carrots. I got all sorts of things going on, but I am mainly harvesting a lot, a lot of herbs at this time because it's not as hot as it was in the middle of the summer. I'm harvesting lots of peppers, my winter squash and pumpkins. So I'm going to be out here harvesting today. And I'm going to take you with me so that you can see why it's so rewarding to drop a seed. It's simple as that, drop a seed. So I'm going to harvest as much as I can. And I know I'm going to have my work cut out for me to put those away properly while they're still nice and fresh. I don't want to keep them sitting around on the counter or even in the refrigerator. I just want to make sure that they remain fresh. I already harvested some berries here, these raspberries. I'm about to harvest the goji berries. And there's still so many raspberries left on the bushes, but I've been harvesting lots of berries every day. We do eat some of them fresh, and I also freeze them for use in the future. They're full of health benefits, vitamin C, antioxidants. You know, it's good that we can have that to include in our diet. And not just that they are full of health benefits, but we grow them ourselves. It's about time to harvest this one right here. Such a thick stem. There. So heavy. Now on to the acorn squash. This one here has some sun scalding on it. And even though I do have a decent harvest, I actually had some challenges with these vine borers and they decimated a lot of my squash plant. We also had an enormous amount of rainfall all throughout the summer and I also had powdery mildew issues. Now these are hot cayenne pepper full of medicinal benefits, but like I said, they're hot and so I know I should be wearing some gloves. I'm going to grab it in a sec. I just forgot to come out with it. But once I'm done harvesting on this plant here, I will grab my gloves. This here is a different type of hot pepper and the reason I like going different varieties of hot peppers is because they have both different flavors and different levels of heat. And this here is why you want to make sure you wear gloves when you're harvesting hot peppers because once you lose that stem just like on this one you're exposed to the heat from that pepper and it gets on your hand. I'm gonna grab these jalapenos they're nice and ripe. I'm gonna save some of the seeds but I'm pretty much going to harvest most of them, even the ones that are blushing. See right there, it's not fully ripened. It can ripen on my countertop, but they're blushing, so I'm going to harvest them. Now we're going to move over to this pimento pepper here, and this is a sweet pepper. Then we're going to grab some of this Mad Hatter pepper, unique shape. This is also a spicy pepper. So it's good that I already have my gloves on. I'm going to grab as much as I can here. And these I'm going to overwinter. The stem's a little bit harder to pull off the branch and I don't want to damage the limbs. So I'm going to clip them with my shears. They're blushing right here as you can see. So it's time for them to go. It's late in the season. And so for the others to come to full maturity and ripen a little bit or at least get to the stage of blushing 
then I have to pull off most of the more mature ones so that's what I'm going to do now we are going to move on over to my habanero peppers this is a very old tree 4 years old and I keep it in this 5 gallon bucket here it's probably its last year but this also is another habanero pepper it's a younger plant it's here from last year and based on the size of these peppers and being that they were fully ripened on the plant, I will be saving up the seeds from these to grow in the future. And as I go along with harvesting from my garden, I can't sit and think enough how much I have saved over the years with growing my own food. Different varieties, different types of food, whether it's root crops, whether it's brassicas, whether it's just herbs. I've saved a lot over the years, dropping seeds every spring or even starting indoors in the winter time so for me it's worth it regardless of the adjustments i may have to make or the challenges that i may face while growing in my zone zone 6b because i did not learn to grow in the cold but i have to make adjustments and it works for me i learn a lot on this journey because it's still a journey for me because i do grow different types different varieties every year and so I learn along this journey and I'm happy to share it with whoever would find this information useful. I like doing it and showing what I do, showing the performance of what I grow and showing the amount of food that I'm able to grow in such a small space. I use container gardening also. I use vertical growing and so that maximizes my space in this short growing season. So it's all totally worth it for me. And I also find a sense of joy and a sense of peace in this environment. Being able to grow this amount of food that my family can enjoy. Grateful for the time and the space that I can enter this garden space where I grow. And enjoy whatever comes with it. Whether it's the challenges of not having enough rain, having too much rain, not having pollinators. Whatever the challenge is. I'm all here for it because at the end of the day, I don't give up, I won't give up, and I can't give up because I see the effort that I put in here in this garden, there's a lot of reward in it. I learned so much just from being out here in the outdoors and being observant. And I will tell you that every garden season is never the same for me. I'm humbled at what nature does and how nature works. Because what I once knew as the norm and how garden works is not normal anymore. And so I'm able to come out here, enjoy the butterflies, which are also pollinators. Observe the different pests that may be in the garden, like this one right here on this kale I have growing. Which I'm going to be spraying this off with some water. I also have sweet potatoes that I'm growing down here. And as you can see, we got potatoes. So I will be harvesting this. If my season was a bit longer, I would have left this till uh, probably November, December. But the coal is going to come in in October. It's going to hit the vines. And I mean, the potatoes at the bottom will be okay. I'm pretty sure if even if I don't harvest it. Because my soil usually don't freeze until probably late December, January, February. The ground will be solid. And so I'm going to come in here and start harvesting these potatoes. There's a lot of work to do. And gardening is definitely a lot of work. It's constant work. And I'm not just doing gardening, as you may know. But these potatoes here, I planted them on May 17th. So it, from May to September, if I could get this good of a harvest in my garden to grow food, you know, it's really well worth it for me. And I can plant these, harvest it, and store it up and use it over the winter months when we're indoors and we're not able to garden the, the way we would during the spring, summer, and fall seasons. And so this is why I grow so much in this small space and I'm able to produce lots of food. All right, this is just to take a water break. But guys, I'm trying to get a point across here i don't own any land here but just a space that my house is on that i have a huge yard and i choose to use it as garden space to grow my food but look at this i harvested all sorts of food today peppers which are sweet peppers different varieties of hot peppers eggplants pumpkins look at that squash 
berries. I still have some more goji berries to go harvest. I have herbs from dandelions. I have different types of herbs to still harvest. I have tomatoes to harvest. And here you can see there's a wide variety of food that I'm growing here. I still have ginger that I haven't harvested as yet. I have turmeric that I haven't harvested. I've already started my fall garden. I mean, there's a whole lot to do. There's a lot of harvesting, a lot of cleanup, and a lot of replanting to do this season. So it's my favorite season, to be honest with you, because it's not as hot normally, but I'm sweating profusely. And the point of my video is not just for people who own a home. You could be renting and you have a balcony that you can grow on. Because let me show you this right here. My container gardening game is up. See that turmeric and that ginger? I have a few of them all over the yard and I do have them in ground also way back there and in my front garden. But I'm looking for the variety of potatoes that I just harvested from the bed, from the raised bed there, because I don't want to get them mixed up. Because I am serious about, uh, this one's Nancy Hall, Carol Gold. Alright, I think this is the sea on my, or sea on me. Where is the tag? I believe this is it right here. Yep, there it is. Right, and I also planted this in this container on 517, just as I did with the raised bed. So let's see how this did. Let's pull this out. All out. So you can see, and your container does not have to be as big as mine. You still are going to produce potatoes. I'm just going to yank these out. I may save some more slips, even though, oh, look at that. I'm already, look at that, guys. See, I'm already pulling up potatoes. So from May 17th, and today is Friday the 20th of September, you can actually have this food. Whether it's your ground crop, whether it's your brassicas. Oop, I don't want to be breaking them. I just broke this one here. But as you can see, I'm not going to harvest this entire container on camera, but I'm just trying to get a message across to you that you can actually grow food very easily in containers or in a small yard space if you choose to do so. Let's cut to the chase. Forget about all the excuses that people might want to make. But if you're about this lifestyle, if you're about gardening, if you're about you know, growing your own food, it can be done no matter the space you have. I am trying to get in here. <laughs> I can feel them, but it's uh, tight in here. And I don't want to bruise them because I'm going to store these up so I can have it for our meals over the winter months. There's another potato here that I'm afraid I might break it or I might bruise it. And the ones that I may damage while harvesting, see that guys? It's right here. I'm not going to, I'm going to set this aside for now. But this is just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And how easy it is to grow your food in a small space. I am about this lifestyle. I am about gardening. And for me, I find pleasure in being able to, and a sense of freedom also, in being able to grow my family's food. And I'm going to tell you, a large percent, and I'm talking about a large percent of the food that we eat here, I grow it in my garden. Different types of fruits, different varieties of fruit. I mean, tropicals that I'm going to overwinter indoors, root crops, brassicas, you name it, guys. I grow it all here. Chicken for meat, layers for eggs, turkey for meat. We go fishing. We do some wild foraging. We go out there. We hunt. We gather. We come home. We take care of it, process it, 
however we choose to do so and we store it up so we can make our meals with it and it's such a satisfying thing you don't have to do it at my capacity or my level you don't have to be intimidated by the amount that I'm doing here because I do quite a lot because I have the time to do it and because I have the experience in doing what I do we just live this natural simple lifestyle where we camp outdoors the tent is up it's a season for camping so we camp out we cook outdoors we garden we fish we hunt we raise chickens we do it all outdoors and we enjoy this satisfying life but my point here is for you to grow as much as you can don't be overwhelmed if you're not used to growing a garden or if you haven't started yet or even if you've started and you grow a lot this is just my encouragement to you to continue to grow because it's well worth it with all the recalls that i've been seeing so rapidly recently coming out and i'm like what is going on are people paying attention to this i'm not saying i don't go to the supermarket yes i do go to the su supermarket it depends on what dish I want to make if let's say over the holidays I want to make a uh, eggplant lasagna yes I will go I would get I'll go in the produce aisle with the organic stuff it says organic but I will go there grab my eggplant and come home and prepare a meal for my family but the vast majority of the food that we eat here is grown right here in my backyard this is all for now. I hope this inspires you to grow your own food as much as you can and hope you find peace and enjoy it while you're doing it. It's good for your health and it's also good for the environment, the ecosystem and the wildlife. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time right here on Fifi's Urban Homestead and Lifestyle.